One such officer who believed the war would be fought on horseback was Manfred von Richthofen. Born in 1892 in the town of Breslau, in the Prussian province of Silesia, von Richthofen had grown up at his family estate, where he'd spent his childhood engaged in athletics, horseback riding, and in what would remain the love for the rest of his days, hunting. Manfred's father, Albrecht von Richthofen, had been a career military officer, serving in the Ulhans, the elite cavalry unit of the army, and rising to the rank of major. The von Richthofens, in fact, had a long history of military service, and it was expected that young Manfred and his brothers would follow in the family tradition. In 1903, at the age of 11, he entered the military academy at Wallstadt, where he would remain for the next six years until being accepted into the advanced Kriegsschule outside of Berlin. After receiving his commission in the Ulhans, Lieutenant von Richthofen joined his cavalry unit not far from the family home, where he continued to spend his spare time riding and hunting. On the first day of World War I, von Richthofen found himself leading a patrol across the Prozna River into Russian-occupied Poland. Here was the moment the 22-year-old Manfred had spent half his life preparing for, leading men into the glory of battle. That first patrol turned out to be as peaceful as a ride in the country, with no enemy to be found. But five days later, the young Ulhan met with real excitement when he rode his unit into an ambush set up by Russian Cossacks. Although Manfred and his men were able to escape, the young officer learned a valuable lesson on that day and resolved to never allow himself to be ambushed again. By the end of August, von Richthofen's cavalry unit had been sent to France, where they would carry out reconnoitering duties for the army. At first, the work was exciting and fairly dangerous, but as the war ground to a standstill, Manfred quickly found his outfit assigned to tasks more mundane in nature. Although he didn't realize it yet, the days of cavalry charges were gone forever. Before the war was finished, Manfred von Richthofen would find his glory in combat, not on the back of a horse, but in the air, and with an airplane serving as his mount. His lifelong training of sports, leadership, and most importantly shooting would combine in such a way that these qualities would make von Richthofen the most famous name in the history of air fighting. For the time being, however, the young Prussian hadn't yet begun thinking about aviation. One young German who was thinking about flying was Oswald Bolka. Born in 1891 in the province of Saxony, he was one of six children whose father, a school teacher, had seen to it that all his children had received a proper education. Against the wishes of his father, Bolka had decided on a military career, and upon completing school had enlisted as an officer cadet, then transferring to aviation shortly before the outbreak of hostilities. Outgoing and likable, he'd easily passed through the flying school at Halberstadt, where he'd received his flyer certificate by the first week of October. Immediately posted to a combat unit, Volka flew two-seater biplanes assigned to carry out an assortment of duties that mostly entailed reconnaissance and artillery spotting. Before the month was completed, Oswald would be decorated with the Iron Cross Second Class, awarded for observation work performed over the French lines. Another flyer who distinguished himself late in 1914 was Max Immelmann. Immelmann had completed his pilot's training in November and found himself posted to FA-62, the same unit Bolka was serving in. A year older than Bolka, Immelman was born the son of a wealthy factory owner in the city of Dresden and had studied mechanical engineering before enlisting in the armed forces. Because of his love for machines, it was only natural that he'd applied for transfer to the aviation branch, where, along with Bolka, he'd quickly established himself as one of his unit's top scouting pilots. Both Immelman and Bolka would soon become names forever associated with the greatest flyers of the First World War especially Bolka, who would eventually pen his famous dicta, a set of rules and fighter tactics that would come to be adopted by pilots of every nation. For the time being, though, both these men would continue with their observation duties, as the weapon that would lead them to fame had not yet been invented.